Ah, just came back from a dream vacation in California. It was so relaxing. We rented out a nice big mansion type house on the side of some mountain with our own pool and, and just everything my kids need to be occupied and, and have fun. I thank the CSB certification and, and my own hard work too actually to have enabled me to take these nice vacations with my family and give my kids a nice little childhood. I even told them that what I spent on this vacation is the sum total of what my own parents spent on all our vacations combined. But you know what? It was a different time, and my parents did their best to give me a great childhood as well. Now I'm back energized and ready to go with new CISSP ideas and awakenings to do more as we progress toward the end of 2023. Only 156 days left, guys, of 2023. Make every single one of them count. Oh, and another thing, money is not everything. Health is greater than wealth any day. Just ask Steve Jobs. In the star property rule regarding the communication of information between security levels based on the Bell LaPagula model, which of the following statements is correct? Is it choice A, a top secret clearance can't read reports from a data set container with a secret classification? Is it choice B, a secret clearance can't write reports to data set containers with a top secret classification? Or is it choice C, a secret clearance can't read reports from a data set container with a top secret classification? Or is it choice D, a top secret clearance can't write reports to data set containers with a secret classification? To get this question correct, you'd have to know the different rules involved in the Bell LaPagula model. They are as follows. The simple security rule, which states subjects at their own security level cannot read any information that is at a higher security level. And there is a star property rule, which states that subjects at their own security level cannot write information to a lower security level. And lastly, there is a strong property rule, which states that subjects with read and write clearances can only read and write information to others in the same clearance level. They can't write or read data with anyone in a higher or lower clearance level. For this question, we are asked to see which statement is correct regarding only the star property rule. You just have to match whichever choice best fits with the star property rule. For choice A, you can already eliminate this choice because it's talking about reading information, and the star property rule talks about writing information. But someone at a higher security level can read information at a lower security level. Otherwise, how else is a CIA case officer with a top secret clearance able to read and analyze intelligence sent to them from an agent with a secret clearance level? Those in a higher clearance must be able to read information sent to them from a lower clearance. For choice B, according to the star property rule, only those at a higher clearance level can't write down to someone at a lower clearance level. This choice is not correct because someone in the lower clearance level can write information to someone in a higher clearance level. But someone with a higher clearance level can't write down to someone in a lower clearance level. This is done because someone like a high level intelligence analyst can't accidentally write something that belongs in their clearance level of top secret to someone in a clearance level of secret. Makes sense, right? Why would a simple lower classification intelligence agent be able to have information written to them from a higher classification level. Remember, we're talking about clearances here. If someone is dealing with top secret information, that top secret information shouldn't be written down to an agent with just a secret clearance. The agent has to have top secret clearance to have top secret inf information written to them. And for choice C, this choice can be eliminated because it's talking about reading reports and not writing them. Leaving us with choice D. A top secret clearance can't write reports to dataset containers with a secret classification, which is exactly the definition of the star property rule in the Bell LaPagula model. Someone at a higher level can't write down to someone in a lower level. Choice D is the correct answer. Just real quick before we end this video, the Bell LaPagula model has the highest security with the least functionality and upholds the information security concept of confidentiality only. If you want integrity, then you got to go with the BIBA model. Bell LaPagula is also a multi-level security system used mostly in government or military facilities where secrecy is of the utmost importance. 
And as you study the Bell Lepagina model, you may also encounter information about mandatory access control within the same few pages of your CSP books. For mandatory access control, it is above all an access control method. Then just think of it as a simple information flow model. It is where subjects access objects and objects send back data to the subject, thus creating information flows. An information flow from the subject to the object, and then the information flows of the object sending information back to the subject. This is mandatory access control. Bell Lapagula can be thought of as a way to enforce rules on these information flows. Bell Lapagula may be built on those models, but it doesn't mean it is used exactly as they are. Using simple security property and star property, these rules help to control the flow of information used in mandatory access control operating systems. So the MAC model is the original model, while Bell Lapagula is a method to enforce the rules in a mandatory access control operating system. They are not mutually exclusive and can also work independently of each other. Bell Lapagula doesn't address covert channels either because someone in a higher classification level, like top secret, who can't write to information at a lower level, like secret, may be able to write to the metadata from the lower level that isn't classified as secret. They can use this metadata to change one bit or add one dot or period or make some small change that changes the metadata but not the actual data representing it. By doing this, the person at the lower classification level of secret who can read the actual data can also look at the unclassified metadata and take into account that the one slight change in metadata signals a series of messages from the other person they're colluding with. If someone were to analyze the Bell Lapagula model, they would not find changes in the metadata, which was used as a covert storage channel. Okay, covert timing and storage channels work with and around a security model and operating system, making them difficult to detect. You can check out my CISP course with an example of covert storage and covert timing channels, along with, of course, complete videos and mandatory access control and the Bell Lapagula model. Good luck on your CSP exam, guys. Thanks for watching.